Well, I'm chilling. Well, I'm chilling. Well, I'm chilling with Toddy One Skip. Chilling with Toddy One Skip. Hey guys, this is Chilling with Toddy One Skip, and we are chilling in my robe. This is going to be my uniform for this series. So, a few guilty pleasures I'm going to share with you, and they are reality television. So, among some of my favorite reality TV shows, which I used to actually mock a few years back, so if that ever comes back and kicks me in the ass, I'm owning it now. I used to mock and say, why? Why are we watching reality TV when there's scripted TV? Because I've written scripted TV. So, for some reason, I really, uh, I have to admit, I've become entrenched, enthralled, engrossed, addicted. To some reality TV. Now, Sister Wives, I'm addicted. Love After Lockup, I'm addicted. I was in a relationship with an inmate. We ended up being together for about seven years. We ended up getting married. She was a really good person, but she had a drug problem. And unfortunately, she bought a pill it's not even been a year. It will be a year on Thursday, September 22nd, 2022, will be a year that my ex has passed on. She bought a pill, and unfortunately, it had fentanyl in it, and she thought she was buying something else apparently. So, you know, I have um, some experience, and I also used to work in a jail, so I have some experience with inmates. So, love after lockup, life after lockup, anything to do with friggin' lockups, I will go out of my way and look at a jail. Because not only that, I had my own business where I sold greeting cards in jails before greeting cards were sold in jails. True. And Southern Charm, big fan of that show too. I wouldn't, I don't know if I'm a fan. The only show that I would think that I'm really a fan of and that I look forward to watching is Love After Lockup, Life After Lockup, anything to do with lockup. Um, I get more infuriated when I see like sister, sister wives and I think because of the unfairness of that, I jump in and say, Boy, you morons, you can't see your own behavior here. Well, I'm going to rip you apart on that behavior when it comes to people like Robin Brown and Cody Brown, who are just, they just don't care. It's not that they don't see it. They don't want to see it. You could show it to them, and that's all that could be within their vision, but they still don't want to see it. So maybe we'll scream it. So, yeah. So right now, I think that I just want to get into like those three shows. If there's more shows that I want to get into, you know, don't don't hold me accountable just for these three shows and tell me that I'm only don't police me only into these three shows. Um, I have an origin story. Uh, you could check that out. I haven't put it up yet. I'm still working on it. I don't know what's going to come out first, but I think. In understanding me and who I am, you would kind of have to understand my origin story. So I'm just going to break it down real quick. I will get into it at some point in time because I realize that it is a fascinating story and a lot of people want to know about it. So um, I come from divorced parents. They were married twice. I have two older siblings and I have a younger sibling. And he and I, my younger sibling and I, were um, the product of the second marriage. My two older brothers, product of the first marriage. My mom, unfortunately, was very bullied throughout her whole life by everybody, including her parents. And my grandparents kind of took 
us over because my dad was a career criminal, not a very good one. And I ended up in witness protection when I went to go live with him for a period of time and then came back and my mom was missing. I was able to find my mom um, because what she did was kind of say, I'm done with this. I'm marrying this person over here and I'm starting a new life. That didn't really work out well for her when I showed up after witness protection. So I worked in corrections where I was um, the kitchen manager of a county jail in Virginia. And then I went to commissary manager of uh, the jail in Virginia and also worked at a second jail distributing commissary. So I was not in corrections. I worked directly with the inmates. They were my employees. Um, from there, I uh, met my, the woman that would soon be my ex-wife and deceased very good friend. Um, I came into some money. My dad, who got out of witness protection after doing time, legitimately made a multi, multi-million dollar business. Legitimately. He gifted us money and I opened up a recording studio. Unfortunately, I was robbed into my second year of the recording studio and I really was afraid to go back there into the studio and we had security. Well, having security guards in a recording studio is not a very creative uh, flow. And, you know, I'll be honest, people that create sometimes want to indulge in um, some illegal activity. And from my understanding, there was some weed smoking in my bathroom. This I found out later. And uh, I, I knew about the weed smoking in the parking lot. Well, you can't do that when you have security guards because they, you know, there were security guards that were armed. So you just, it kind of infringed on the creative process of stuff. However, saying that, I did, um, I did help at least one artist um, that was on The Voice and who has since passed on. And I think she came in fourth on The Voice and, and um, actually uh, toured with Steve Vai. So, and from there, I went back to school and I decided that I was going to help younger people before they really got into trouble. And I ended up working as um, a counselor uh, with uh, juveniles that had addiction problems and behavioral problems in a residential setting. So I did that for about five years. And so I've been around the block a few times. I've done a few things. Um, I've ha I have my own survival story. And I've studied a lot of behaviors. I don't have a degree in that, um, but I have schooling that could back me up. In that. And, you know, my life experience, I'm not young anymore. I'm, I'm young to 80-year-olds, but I'm not so young to 20-year-olds. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's the story of my channel right now and uh, or at least this segment on my channel because I have a lot going on I guess and I'm still trying to find my way um, as I said creative <clears throat> and uh, I, I write fiction and I read nonfiction so we'll see what happens here and I'm hoping you guys will come along for the ride as we call people out on who they are because I guess the bottom line, everything here, is that being fair is the most important thing to me. That would really be my origin story. And I believe that I actually might have that up already. So anyway, let's do this. Well, I'm chilling.
Well, I'm chilling. Well, I'm chilling with Toddy One Skip. Chilling with Toddy One Skip.